Good morning, everyone. Are y'all ready for day two? All right, we're going to start off the bat today with an IET activity. Let's see, Sandy and the kidna, where are y'all in the room? Where are they? Those women. There they are. Okay, good. They're going to be um, doing the IET activity. Following the kitten and Sandy, we'll have Carla going over program accountability and um, changes to our assessment policy. Then we're going to have some discussion, talk about best practices. We're going to review the questions or the topics that y'all discussed with us yesterday that you're still kind of struggling with. We're going to have lunch and then we're going to call it a day. So um, have an open mind today, ask questions. We want you to learn as much as possible while you're here. So I'm going to turn it over to you again. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so Sandy and I want to do an IET activity with you all. We kind of changed the game yesterday. We had something different planned, but um, after we sat and listened to y'all and talked to a lot of y'all, we decided to take a left turn. Okay, so if you've been working with Sandy long enough, you know what a left turn means. Okay, so we're going to go off strip just a little. Um, but she'll be right back, and so we'll get started when she get back. But I just want to um, just lay one ground rule through before we start. And that is, um, we want to look at this as a safe space. Okay, we want you to be able to share with us what you know and what you don't know so that we can better help you and support you. If you need individual um, attention or help or assistance, then let us know. And after today, we will schedule some time to come out and sit and talk with you and help you plan through some things. Because we want to make sure that you get it right. You hear Beth talk about a lot about auditing and making sure that we have things in place in the event we're audited by the feds. So we want to make sure that all of our programs are on point. Um, because if an auditor comes, we may not always know what site they're coming to. We just know that they're coming. And so with that in mind, we want to make sure that everybody gets an A+. Plus. So we're going to do some activities today. We're going to do group activities. Um, it's going to be very engaging. Um, we're asking everyone to participate. We're going to need a writer. We're going to need a recorder. And we need you to be open-minded, and we need you to share. And so when we ask you to share out, there's a purpose for that. And that purpose is so that your other peers can hear some of the barriers and some of the innovative things that you're doing, as well as some of the, 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 the great things, the, the challenges that you're having, um, that you may have had on the onset, and you're not having that anymore. How did you overcome those things? Um, and so, I don't know what's taking Sandy so long. <laughs> but, but, uh, but when she comes and we start our activity, that's how, it's going to, that's how it's going to go. Okay, so what you all will be doing is building an IT program. And we're going to give you some, st some steps to do that. Okay? Hey, you talking about me? What she say? I was just warming the stage up for you. <laughs> okay, so here she is. I told her, I, I told her we was. I said all good things about you. I told her we were taking a left turn today. We had something different planned yesterday, but um, after being here and hearing them and talk to them, we just decided to take a left turn to do something different. And, and if they know you, they know what a left turn is. <laughs> I'm full of left turns, folks. But let me tell you, this is my cup is running over from yesterday, y'all. I needed this probably as much as you or more to know what we're doing, what our mission is, that we're still pushing forward for the good. Um, because sometimes it feels like you get in a rut. I don't know if you feel like you're ever in a rut. I feel like I'm in a rut sometimes. It's like, why am I doing this? Why didn't I pick a cute dress shop where I could sell bows and dresses and I could go home at night, right? But that's not our mission. That's not our mission. Um, we have bigger plans for us. Somebody has bigger plans for us. So um, when we start talking about IETs and, and, you know, IETs are part of what we do. That's not going away regardless of if we have a DHS grant or we have Kellogg funds. IETs are in our law. And it is part of the expectation from the feds that we do this. Um, 
We've started out in 2015, 2016. We had my best. We had programs that were doing this. We were, we're, we're advantage over a lot of states because we did have some of those things going in. We're, we're right there with Washington State. Now, Washington State has a lot more money than we do. Most states have a lot more money than we do. So I think we do a really good job with the amount of money we get. But we want to figure out what we can do to help you with IETs, where your barriers and all those types of things. So we're going to start, first of all, let's make sure, because we have talked about IETs. I can remember talking about IETs and integrated ed education and training when Eloise was still here, okay? We were at Lake Tiakata. We went to Rhode Island. There was something called Accelerating Opportunities. That's right. Yeah. You're right. So this is not new. This is not new. It's still a struggle for us because we're having to work with other people in our colleges, in our departments, and we don't have um, a lot of that authority, right? And I get that. So what I want to do is kind of identify some of those issues, some of those problems, and let's come up, we're going to problem solve in the next hour. Um, so let's just make sure everybody knows what an IET is. Do I have to talk in this microphone? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk. What are the three parts of an IET? Somebody tell me, what's the first thing you have to have for an IET to be an IET? Now, I know y'all yeah. know this. Adult, oh, yeah. okay. adult education literacy activities. That's what we do, right? Every level, that's what we do. Basic skills sufficient. We're teaching them the adult ed piece because everybody needs to read, write, do math. What's the second piece? I know. Do we need a cheat sheet? <laughs> <laughs> second part, what part do you, what is the second thing you have to have for it to be an IT? Workforce. Employability skills. We use Smart Start for that. Smart Start is employability skills. If Smart Start goes away, which I'm not saying it is, we're still going to have to do employability skills, y'all. That's part of our mission now. Before we owe up, that wasn't part of our mission. We didn't have to do that training. Now it's just a part of it. But the third piece, what can what are some options for that third piece of an IET? Somebody tell me. What what do you do with that workforce piece? On the job training. Hmm? On the job training. On the job training. Apprenticeships. Apprenticeships. Internships. What about your CTE workforce programs? What about your bridge programs with your workforce training classes? Program. Don't help them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't help them. Okay. They talk about this already. We've talked about this for five years. Y'all yeah. are smart people. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. CTE, workforce. Does it have to be all of those things in the workforce section, in that workforce piece? No. It can be one of those things. What ties all of those three things together? And we haven't done a lot of training on this, but you're going to get some training. What ties all three of those things together to make it an IET? Single set of objectives. Say it louder for everybody. Single set of objectives. Single set of learning objectives. How many of you would say, I have a single set of learning objectives. I'm strong on that. I don't need any help. I know exactly what I'm doing. Everybody? Don't, you don't have to. Y'all, but no, it's okay. It's okay. We go it's okay. okay. So let me tell you this, the feds don't expect perfection. We don't expect perfection. We expect continuous improvement. I said that in 2012 when I started the job as a program specialist for LOEs. If we're not continuously improving and trying to get better, then we're stalled and we're not moving forward. And our trajectory is forward. And we, we have made a name for adult ed in the last five years, it hasn't been there before. And we're going to keep moving in that trajectory. Whether CTE wants to work with us or whether the workforce wants to work with us, it doesn't matter. We're going to do the job that the Fed said we were going to do. The state plan says we're going to do it. However, you know the parts, you know about SSLO, our single cell learning objectives. Support services. Oh, support services is huge, right? We know that. Our students need reference services. Honestly, most college students would benefit from wraparound services. It's not just our students. You've got high schoolers who are in the same level as our students who are just as lost and don't have that pathway identified. So wraparound services is crucial. 
So we know what the parts are. How many of you would say, man, we got an IAT going. I have no issues, no complaints. We're 100%. Somebody want to raise your hand? You don't have to. Anybody? No. So let's talk today. This is what we're going to do. We're going to identify some problems at your table. I do want to move some folks around. Now, I want everybody to pick up your hand sanitizer, use your hand sanitizer, get all clean, because I want Brian to sit with the Gulf Coast. I want Priscilla with Erling, and I want, no, not you Gulf Coast, I'm sorry. You, Hines, Priscilla, uh, Pascagoula with Gulf Coast, because your, your public school programs here cannot do IETs without your help, effectively. Now, I say that Kathleen has a dang good program going on. She, if you guys, she has pulled her people in from uh, the local, the local workforce areas. She's talked to business and industry. She's got it going on. She's also fortunate that she's in an area that is high industrial. Priscilla doesn't have that luxury. She's in Grenada. No offense to Grenada. Now, no offense to Grenada. Love you, Grenada. Hey, okay, but uh, I will tell y'all, Milwaukee Tool is moving to Grenada. I don't know if y'all saw that today. Did, Did not see that. Better. That's good. Good announcement. So, Rankin County is the same thing. They've got business interest, but Hines has some, it's so sporadic and it's so spread out. So, but for, for this to truly work and to optimize this for every student we have, and regardless of what program it is, we got to have the relationships in this room. So, I want you to move to the table, and, and then I'll, I'll tell you what your assignments are. I don't know how you, Jennifer, do you, you said, Kelly, I don't know. Kelly, move over here. Priscilla, you move over there. And pass I couldn't do it. This switch places. Yeah, y'all switch places right here. This right is just here. for this activity. You want to go back to the table right here with Hines? Y'all make some room for Andrew. Hmm? Yeah, you come back home. We're not going to make you do this all by yourself. Come on, Gina. You go grab you a, a table. You get to be wherever, wherever you want to be. All right. You've earned it, darling. That's right. Now, if you two want to get with another table, scooch in over here. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you to get in personal space because I, I want to be COVID friendly or whatever. But this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a few minutes at your table. You need a reporter and you need a recorder. So somebody needs to write this down. I know that's only two of y'all, so y'all might want to join another table. Go back here. Go back here. Scoot over there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go here. Are you the only prison person here today? Oh, we need it. Okay. Christy, will you come up here? No right for the, the public school programs all right so I'm going to give you a few minutes and I want honest candid feedback there is no judgment in this room none and what is said in these four walls stays in these four walls we cannot help you we'll bleep that out <laughs> okay so Lori and Kim are they on the phone all right they're going to do, I'm going to them to sit down. They're going to come up with some of their issues too because I want to hear from them. We don't want to exclude them. But I want to get you at your table. I want you to talk about where are your barriers? What is the problem? If it's, if it's communication between you and workforce or workforce won't talk to you, if it's CTE, if it's you don't understand how okay, course works. Hold on a second. Let's do that in three steps. Okay. What's the first thing we want to know? What's the, the first question? It's one of the barriers. Okay. That's what we're talking about. What are the barriers? You're That's your question. You need to write that down. What are your barriers? Okay. Why, why do you feel like it's not where you want it to be? All right? 
Well, wait, 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 wait. Um, no, no, they're going to they're gonna talk about this at their group. That sounds very good. Well, <laughs> no judgment in this room. No judgment. I'll write it on there. What are your barriers? And I'm going to give you a few minutes to talk again. This is. Does everybody understand what I'm, I'm talking about now? Okay. What's the third one? So what are the barriers? That's it. That's what Why? we're Okay. What are the barriers? That's the first thing. First thing you're going to do, identify the barriers, candid talk, what are your issues? And What's we'll, the time for this one? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. I keep the time. Yep. Ready or not. All right. So, our Lauren and Kenwood. Okay. Um, May we have your attention, please? All right. So, this is what we're going to do. And Courtney is going to help write. I'm going to write some of the solutions. But I want you to pay attention to what the other table is saying because they may have had the same problem. They may come up with your solution that you didn't know about, right? Um, we're sharing so that we can all learn from each other. Because you guys are, have more resources and knowledge about what goes on at your campus every day than we do. We can tell you from a, from a, a high level how to do it, but you're the one that has to be on the ground building these relationships and making it happen. So we need to know how to support you because we can't help you get better if we don't know what your issues are. And that's, I, I spent a lot of time last night thinking about what is, what, what, how can we really help if we don't know what those things are. So. I want you to be candid, I want you to be honest, and know that we're not judging you. This is an open conversation. If you have a problem, just say it. Just say it. Unless it's about me and it's me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let this table go first um, because Karen said they have a solution. <laughs> All right, so let's see. What, and y'all are gonna have to speak up for everybody. Um, I don't think I can clean the mic, I don't know. Uh, Say it loud for everybody. Okay, hold up. We'll, we'll clean the mind kit between each hand. We're going to be so COVID friendly. Because we know we got all kinds of wipes. Lordy. We should have invested in um, hand sanitizer about two years ago, y'all. All right. Who's your reporter over here? Y'all didn't decide? Early. Okay. All right, Erlen, tell us what some of your problems were to start with. Limited workforce training programs for the public. Um, we Limited? Are, okay. Yes, because uh, we found out that a lot of our workforce programs as policies are basically designed for employers, for their employees, not to the public okay. or for our students. Um, populating the class, uh, the policy. Um, for instance, in workforce classes, you have to have a certain number of people enrolled in the class. And if that class does not make, the class is canceled, and then, you know. You right, know. then you're left in limbo. You're left in limbo. Okay. The, those were the two. Those were the two main things. Okay. Issues. So, at your table, what solutions did you come up with? Limited workforce training for the public and populating classes. Do you have any solutions? Changing the workforce policy. <laughs> well, what do I do? <laughs> hey, I have a question though. What do you mean when you say limited workforce training? Okay, and most of our colleges is have been a company calls and requests um, for the training. Forklift training is not necessarily open to the public. It's only open to those participants who the employer deems pre-employment is ready to go to work and we need to send these folks to the train. So it's not open. If a person calls off the street and wants to go to forklift certification training, they can't go. It's not open to the public. The workforce coordinator may do open to the public classes or they may do company classes. So is that your main problem yeah. right there? Okay. So solution one would be workforce policy. What other solutions do you have in this room? Huh? Back to five students. Back to five students. Yeah. Because that's a little bit easier. And that gives us a clear shot of what the How's about this? How's about instead of promoting... Speaking to the mic, Karen. 
Just hold it forward. She can hold it. Okay. I'm all shot. I should be good. Okay. <laughs> I did not miss my shot. Can you hear me? Now, how about instead of promoting AB classes where people come to just get a high school diploma, that you instead promote workforce classes? And when somebody goes in to get a job and they realize at that point they don't have an HSE, that you work to get your HSE while you're getting that job instead of, you know, you come to AE, and you come to AE and you say, you're getting this, and what are you going to do next? What if you went to get a job and they said part of getting this job is in your AE, so we're going to refer you from workforce to AE instead of the opposite way? Why can't it be both ways? Well, I mean, I I'm just asking. That. So does anybody else, let's, let's, let's take one problem at a time. If somebody has the same problem, let's talk about it. Anybody else have limited workforce training issues? Jennifer? No, I'm talking about this one for, for this table. Even if they do change some of the workforce policies, some of the um, people that be, powers that be, need to be better educated as to what the what is. Because from what I hear from them, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, let me just say, I don't agree with what you just said. There is no reason why your workforce person, no, this is what we have to figure out is how to sell this to workforce. We can pay, we can pay for an entire class of workforce training for your students. Now, let me tell you another solution to that. Do you have to use your workforce for training? They're workforce people. Hmm. You know, no, there's nothing, nothing that says you have to go through your workforce director for training. They don't want to play in the sandbox with you. Well, Mississippi Construction Education Foundation, they might come out and they might teach all your students HVAC or carpentry. There are consultants who do training all over the state or out of state. You have the budget to pay for that. All right. So we don't necessarily have to go. So you. Sure. If they don't, want, no, no. no. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. Okay. What about the um, old school career technical classes that were offered at night? Students would come in. They didn't have any requirements. It was just sign up. You know, like one hundred and twenty-five dollars, something like that, and took the course for. Excellent. Why not? If we're going to do that, what do we need to do? Advertise? But I mean, like you said, as far as payment for it goes, but like the instructor and so forth. So you've got, you've got, so there's multiple plots of money. I would say you can do that in contractual adult ed, okay? However, use your money smart in a smart way. I couldn't think of the word to say. Smartly. I don't think that's a word. Wisely. Wisely. Thank you. Hey, it ain't always clicking up there. You uh, understand. Thank you, Jennifer. So can I say something? Can I say something? Yes. So you know that your budget's with MDHS and Kellogg. You don't have money to pay for programs. You have funds to pay for student support services, limited staff, and that's it. Okay? So be careful because you can't pay for instructors with those pots of money. But you okay. can pay for tuition. Yeah, you and you can pay for class fees. Right. So the fee for that class is $125 a person. Right. So you charge $125 a person to every eligible participant in that class. Right, but we're not paying for to build classes. So you build your budget. How much does it cost? So I had, I had. This is what I would do as a, as, a, as a business. I have one consultant. more thing to okay. say. Okay. All right. Just one second. Okay. So, as a person building training, you decide how much what's your training going to be, how much does that training cost, and then you have to build your tuition around 
to cover your cost, okay? So if the cost, cast cost $1,000, and I'm just throwing a number out there because it's even, so you have 10 students, that's $100 a student. You're not necessarily paying the instructor, your budget will, but that is paying for that class, and you can do that because it, if it's a certification or it leads to it in a pathway, it has to lead to a job, okay? We don't want, I mean, you have to think about what is going to be best for my student and what is my outcome going to be. We always need to focus on what is the outcome, all right? Um, the only thing I wanted to say goes back to Wendy's question about um, a workforce class. I didn't really hear it, but I just want to add to that, that when you get into talking about workforce, in, in most cases, when you get into talking about building workforce classes and who can attend and who can't attend and workforce training programs, a lot of that depends on your college. Your college makes those decisions. Okay? So you need to have a conversation with your workforce person, but you know what? You are not tied to what your workforce director says unless you report directly to them. Okay? I'm not saying that's not a big situation. But be creative and think outside the box. Because we are able to in our workforce, I mean we may just be fortunate at Heinz, but I mean we our students, whether they're my best, your best, whatever they are, if it's a class all went to the public, they can go to that. Or we can have a schedule where we create our own class and we come just for our students. And most of the time that's how we do it. I mean we create class, say with the rest of the we got what on today for OSHA on the Jackson campus. That's strictly for our mom that's built in too. But if we don't have something, you can ask to have Yeah. Now, that's not the whole version. You got other types of money. All right. Okay. So, where are we at? We all can to our students. But there, but we have to, you know, we do have to pay for the instructors. Absolutely. But we, they are free for our students. So, yeah, I mean, we, like she said, like Chrissy said, if we don't have enough students, then yes, like in our AE or my best, then we'll be able to the CTE students as well. But even then, we still can offer them to the public. I mean, anyone can come. That's all. The difference is, is that they're coming from the public and they pay our students. Thoughts, questions about I, I, I just think that there, there needs to be a come to Jesus. Okay. Let's write that on there. Come to Jesus. Jesus, come to us. Between all entities. I agree. And they need to understand that we need this in order for us to make a Well, and they need to understand that we have to do this whether they want to be part of it or not. And we have not had a face-to-face -face meeting where we can say those things. You can only do so much on Zoom. And to build those relationships, we have not, I have not had, thank you, have not had the opportunity to do that because of COVID, which has been very frustrating for me. And I know it has been for you as well, because how do you build an IET when you can't have face-to-face -face classes? I get all that. So take COVID out of the picture, because COVID will be, we're going to get back to normal. This is not our normal. I'm just determined it's not our normal. So. That's, a, that's an option that you can build your own workforce class. I don't recommend that as your first option. Your first option needs to be talking to your workforce people and saying, hey, we need this. I can populate this class. You don't have to write a wet fund project for it if you don't want to. Write a zero dollar project. We can pay for the cost of the class because there will be a fee or a tuition attached with that. Why would they say no? Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't because we got some naysayers out there and I'm, I get that. So we got old school people who say, no, oh, we're not doing it. We've never done it that way. I get it. That means you have to start thinking of a different solution. Sandy, we have some of the programs that have, um, that have an agreement, not an agreement, but they have a relationship with the CTE or the workforce mm -hmm. pro person or director. And so they may have three available slots for CNA or they may have you know, five available slots for truck driving. So that conversation is a good one to have as well because you have guaranteed That's slots. Right. That's um, right. You may have more, but you know that 
okay, I got five slots here with CNA. I'm good. I know, you know, that I'm good on that end. But then you have truck driving, and you may have 15 students who are, you know, um, interested in truck driving, but your workforce or your CTE person is saying, no, it's first come, first serve, you know. And those are conversations that we have to have, right? right? But the ultimate thing is, is you have to be the messenger, and you have to be the one pushing it, which means you've got to know what your options are, and you have to know what your need is and what your outcomes are going to be, what you're looking for. All right. Good, good discussion. Anything else from this table? All right. Who's next? Julia? Lindsay? What? Y'all have some? Did y'all have any barriers? Okay. Well, some of our questions or comments were answered by the previous table, but one of the things we talked about was expanding our pathways that are colleges. And then with that, it goes with all the, the things that you have to do to expand by writing your single set of learning objectives, um, getting correlating different things, maybe hiring personnel. So that was one of our big things is expanding our pathway. So does everybody know on the MCCD website, every approved CTE course with curriculum is there. The objectives are there. So okay if CTE doesn't want to necessarily sit down and and you need them to sit down with you because you the single set of learning objectives comes where you go okay um, I don't even know in a good example welding. Uh, welding that's always when I would go to yeah. we're gonna learn how to use the lathe oh, well oh, heck I don't somebody using terms yeah. come on people Let's do some <laughs> measurement measurement right mm -hmm. so we know okay for this this activity you have to have measurement you need some um, you need to know what centimeters are. You need to know how to convert those. You need to know how to calculate how much um, materials you need. <laughs> so you you got to you have to know that when you're looking at the single set of learning objectives, you have the base for that on the website. So you can start that yourself and say, Hey, I need some help. What is it here that we need to teach our students in this program that is going to help you in your class? We have to approach this as, okay, I want to help my students be... Um, I think all I needed to know is what format do you want it in? And it, it can be need to look like a something-something document, like a curriculum something document? That's all no, I need to know. No. We're yeah. yeah. Like I don't need it. And, and we're gonna we're gonna do a training on that yeah, because some of the ones know. we've seen, they are to us they were very hard to read, <laughs> and they had a lot of information on there that you really, for this per the IT purpose, you don't need it. All you need is your career readiness standards, and then to match it up okay. with the curriculum That's of that program. They, we and have so, no format. We will have a we will have a template. Okay, it, keep it simple. And let me tell you, there is no right or wrong way because we have don't even have it, a lot of direction from the feds on what that looks like. But there needs to be an effort. So that we say we're trying to align skills because the ultimate goal, what's the ultimate goal? The student is successful in that pathway. Not just that student, but you can help students that aren't in adult ed be successful in that class too, because you can bet and especially with COVID uh, and the gaps that we're going to see in our education, they're going to need that help too. Just because they got a diploma doesn't mean they know how to do measurement. It doesn't mean they know how to do fractions. Um, doesn't mean they have critical thinking skills. We, as adult ed folks, can help all of our students be successful. And that's how you need to sell that to your CTE folks. Hey, you know what, I know you, you're teaching the core. You are the subject matter expert for welding. However, I'm the subject matter expert for basic skills. And how can I be your partner and help you and all of those people in that class be successful? Because your outcome is the same. You want everybody in that class to be successful, right? We want all of our students to succeed. And maybe part of the problem is why they don't finish is because they have deficits in measurement and critical thinking, right? It's not just our students, y'all, who lack those skills. It's not. 
And where we're going to see the issue moving forward, and we've had conversations about this already, even some of the presidents have brought this up. We are going to see severe gaps in people coming through our K-12 programs probably for the next 10 years because we have kids learning how to read on Zoom. We have kids trying to learn how to do multiplication tables on Zoom with no hands-on stuff. And, you know, it, there's a lot of issues with that. But they're not doing any state testing right now, okay? So those kids who are getting a diploma, they're getting passed through. And I'm going to say this. I know this. My niece goes to Brandon. She had a zero in Spanish until COVID hit. She passed for the year. She can't speak a word of Spanish. She can't even probably say hola, okay? <laughs> but she got a grade in that class, and she's going to move forward and graduate. It's happening all over the state. They don't know how to deal with this, and that's all they can do because you think about it. They can't fail everybody because you've got kindergartens coming in every year. You've got to push them forward because they don't have enough space. So there's, there are going to be issues. I, I brought this up because the workforce folks don't always recognize National Career Readiness Certificate. How many of you will have, have been told NCRC is not worth the paper it's on? Some people say that. Some businesses use it. Some businesses don't. The thing about, and this is what you need to educate people on, on that National Career Reading Certificate, it gives you a gauge that they can read and do math. There are no other assessments that a diploma is going to give you a guarantee that person can do math and read. And, and um, math charts, graphs, diagram. charts, graphs, diagrams. That's right. So yeah. we need, that's a, that gives us as a program, as an instructor, we know at least they have the skills to be able to be and participate and function in that class. So push the NCRC for that very reason and say, hey, I, maybe our companies don't recognize it. And you can look in the state. We have work ready communities all over our state, not so much in the northeast section of our state. But and that's where everybody thinks that we want to go. But we need a we need a gauge to know where our students are. That NCRC will help us and industry if they will recognize that. Industry is going to come back to us in a year or two and go, hey, you're, we've got students who can't read and write. Yeah, we know. And it's not going to be students who, who don't have a diploma. All right, so I'm on my kickbox and I'm talking. I'm going to get those like minutes, minutes, minutes. Yeah, right. I have <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we We got a right here. She's moving us forward. Barriers. Jennifer? <laughs> One barrier is what we've already discussed. The other okay. barrier was the mission of the instructor. You have these students who they just don't fit. If they can't get into CTE, right. speak your mind. They can't get into um, uh, CTE because they don't have a silver. Well, they can't get into CTE because they don't meet the entry requirements. Right. Bottom of the pass. And then our. <laughs> And then our workforce is requiring silver. Oh. So all except for one program. So therefore, we've got all of these students that they don't fit. Yeah. Why is workforce anyway, requiring silver? I'm just curious. That's an excellent question. Who I made that decision? Because that's at your local level, right? Is that Todd? Yeah. Okay. That's in our, that's in our, that's in our, <laughs> all of our programs require silver. So you're telling me. So none of your workforce classes that you talked about, unless you get a silver, you can't no, be no, in? No, no, no. Any workforce training classes don't require Okay. She said her workforce training classes require silver. Well, then how are they getting anybody in their workforce training classes? Well, um, our, our programs will take my, my best people with my assets. Ours. I, well, I, all I so, we, so what's the solution to that? She's pointing at me! <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, but you're right. I do not request if that student, if I'm, if I'm easy on that student, but if I know that student I'm requesting can pass and is going to retest at some point in the future, 
and I'm comfortable that that, that student can pass and succeed, I pop an email and they will take that baby. And that's because you have a good relationship with your person. I keep that, that career tag for that workplace. So, so your solution here is not me, but technically we need to communicate with our workforce people and our workforce need to understand our vision yeah. and mission. Maybe they Absolutely. I get that. All right. One of the other things that we discussed was um, for, for us community involvement for the students who are Community involvement? So community involvement for students who already have their HSD. Right. I mean, they're high school. Right. So for us, it's like getting them and making sure that they do smart start. And it's like, do we take the percentage? Do we not? So we just kind of feel, we just take it. Okay. Say it out loud, G. Come on. We all know that today. We all know that. Any other issues? We wrote that back. What did you ever say? I couldn't hear you. About HSA community involvement. What did you say? The students that already have high school equivalency that are um, coming into the My Best program, you know, at one point we just only take a certain percentage. So now we're just taking them, and so the main thing for us is to make sure that they get the Smart Start page. And so we're having some difficulties with them completing Smart Start. Of course, you know, we know that they are deficient because we tagged them, but, you know, they just don't want to do their part. And they, the ones that we have now, went into um, pharmacy tech and provider. And so they go directly into the program, so there's not like a prerequisite class. Your prerequisite is Smart Start. I, okay. That's what you have. I'm sorry. If you want this, if you want the body, or if you want this, then you will do smart start. Okay. Period. First. And first. Okay. Just to touch on what Jennifer says, because that was a discussion again on our peer circle meeting. You know, so we have individuals who are coming in with their high school diploma. Okay, we tell them that they have to pay smart start. Smart start is just an employability skills piece. They'll start off taking it but they won't finish it, right? Mm -hmm. It is a challenge for us to keep trying to push them to do it when they don't understand we don't want that. We already have our high school diploma. We just want this is how, how do you meet the three components of the IET if they're not in HSC prep anyway? But they're coming in with the deficiency. Because they're deficient. They're deficient. Okay, so I'm missing out on those. Because I have those, I'm not counting those tonight because of that fact, like what you were saying. You're right, if they're deficient and they take, they're in there and they're in there. And then 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 they're in there. So Tamara said she is missing out on that group with a high school diploma because she hasn't been counting those as IT because she thought they couldn't be counted as an IT because they had a diploma. Right, they didn't have it. The, they didn't, they didn't uh, have HS, HS, they had their HSC, right. but they weren't doing HSC prep. Right. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, well, but they're taking no. and they're in ASD. Let me tell you your so solution. And this is Sandy's solution. It may not work, but for your students right there, why do you not just put them in the ACT working curriculum? They're in the two. Well, if they're in a the smart start, they should be doing that They anyway. should be doing that anyway. Right. Okay. 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 I'm saying that okay. because they have a high school diploma. They're still basic skills division. They still need to increase their reading, writing, and math because just because they have a high school diploma doesn't mean they can read, write, and compute. Unfortunately, y'all, I'm sorry. All right. All right. All right. This table, McKinley, go ahead. working with Cody and we allowed them to eliminate the 20% for now just to kind of get things going with Smart Start. And that's something we realized we might need to revisit. I mean, that's not a federal requirement, the 20%. It's something that's a state requirement for them. So if you're concerned about that, I just wanted you to know we are revisiting it. Flexibility. And, and, and if you don't take them, even when they come with an HSC, if you don't take them, put them through Smart Start, you don't, you're not able to count them. You can't report them. 
So I don't, um, why would you not want to take them? You should be taking them for these students, even if they have a high school diploma. Yep. And again, it comes back to because that student. Do you want those services? This is what you do. Y'all, we, and I get, you're like, oh, we want everybody we can get. Yes, you do, but you want people who are going to be committed right. and who are going right. to stay in. I would rather have 5,000 dedicated good students than 10,000 students who did flop. And I think that was an issue when we first started. And remember that 20% are students who have low educational functions. That's right. Well, they're not your scholars. That's right. That's right. If they come in with a deficiency, they can be judged. Jesus. I think that's what we were doing. For me, I struggled with that when we went back to the my best only pay for six hours because that eliminated, like for example, it eliminated my health care assistant program because it is a one semester class, 15 hours, you cannot break it up, I cannot take out six hours and get them. Yeah, and so we had to just cut it. So how much is that a 15 hour program? You pay per hour? It's a 15 hour program. You pay per semester. Well we pay five. Jones is only per hour. Okay, okay. sir. Okay, so two things. We're not the only one having No, yeah. what's the day? The 20th, the 20th, this is the 23rd. I think today is the deadline yeah. for ability to benefit. You're supposed to check so, email. well, I need to check it right now, but I'm talking. <laughs> so, right now, the feds, this is their deadline. If they have not sent us an approval letter, today it is approved automatically. Which means we will have a statewide ability to benefit plan that will pay for the first six hours of a student's, um, they can automatically qualify for Pell in the first six hours. They don't have to do the six hours, get a good grade, and then not qualify. Immediately they will qualify. So that a nursing program will qualify for it. And you can pay that semester. Yeah. Keep running it's down. not long, it's just delayed. You will, that will be in effect almost immediately. Is that Let's what it's Let me say this. Yep. Okay, okay, so okay. here's the thing okay. about that. No, come on, come on. Your college has to be implementing ability to benefit. A lot of y'all are not using it. You're not taking advantage of it. And it is considered a student support service for your students. It's only going to benefit the students and it'll benefit the college because you're applying financial aid to continue their education. But if you're not implementing that at your college, you can't tap into it. If you have a financial aid director that says, I just don't want to do it, that's you ain't doing nothing anyway. Well, and you're the one who's getting the paperwork and everything over here for the school. That's not what I'm asking. But what she's saying is that permission. Yes. You, but that, that, that passed for that. But she took her to say it passed. But ability to benefit, what we did is we, we modeled our statewide ability to benefit state plan because the feds gave you an option. You can do that. You can, you, we submitted it and said, we're going to do these things, blah, 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 blah. And really, all that is is we're going to give them wraparound services, which we're already doing. We're going to do, make sure they're on a career path, which we're already doing. But that first six hours of CTE is eligible for Pell. So if you got a 15 hour program and they're elevated automatically schedule. It pays for if it's college credit. Whatever your Pell Grant is for college credit. Now, they are looking at short term workforce, but that is that has not been brought back up as this administration. We don't know where we are with that, but we have Y'all technically it's approved because we didn't get a letter yesterday saying it wasn't. So I'm going to check that in a minute. That is a huge benefit for all of your students. Hey, we can put you in the CTE class right now without your high school diploma because you're going to be in this pathway. All right. Okay, the other thing we mentioned was the in verification. I know we talked about this before. All right. So how many of you are scared to use your DHS money? Raise your hand. Just be honest. Everybody's scared to use their DHS money because we don't want to be on the front page of the newspaper. I get it. I get it. Okay? I get it. But 
And I'm, we're going to reach out, and Kit and I are going to reach out and talk to Kimberly um, Smith. She is the workforce director. Because when we talk through this, our understanding is that you have to make your best faith effort to make sure that student is um, qualified for services. Where we're having issues, based on what uh, Wendy said, is getting people to bring in the documentation, is right? Yes. When it comes to for us, I don't know how you know, when it, when it comes to their parents, when we have to live, they have a job and it's just their income verification. That's not That's a, their parents' social security. And right. People don't want to give that up. I will, um, we had on our meeting last week or week before last, we had Lori Tatum on with us. She's our program officer for our MDHS grant. Um, and she did provide some information and I can, I emailed that link to y'all. Y'all can just go to where she is and, you know, listen to that. But she said making the best effort to verify that income is all they want to see. If you don't have anything that is on that list, Make sure you call us to say, hey, this is the situation I have. What do I need to do? Because I've gotten some emails after that call saying, hey, this is what we got. This kid is living with his friend, so, grandpa, uncle. All right, I'm going to ask, on the I'm gonna ask no. the kid a question. Could we, could we create a document and have somebody at the school, the student sign off and notarize saying this is what I have? I mean, is there something we could do to make you feel more secure about it that a DHS would approve. That's a conversation we need to have. My navigator is very scared right now. Uh -huh. she, said, she said all those people just wore stripes. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> Well, she said, I mean, she said, I know she said, I get it. She said, I'm not going to wear those. And she said, pretty much, I'm, I wasn't on that phone when we had the lunch and all the other But she felt like after that, and this is the same place, she wanted to she But she felt like after that, that she was scared because pretty much that person said, well, she did. She did. And what, what she That's right. Yo, so what she said was make the best the best effort to verify so, that it comes. If they don't meet, if they don't go over that max with that um, number of uh, people who are in that household, you are fine. The only problem we have is when they can't verify that income, and I know that that is an issue for the population of students that we serve, but you have to ask the questions. You have to get whatever documentation you can to put in that file. If you're uncertain about anything, I'm telling you, call me. I'm going to call her, and then we're going to note the file and say we talked to Lori Tatum on this day at this time, and this is what she told us. That's the best I can tell y'all right, right now. Yeah. And you know what? I'll, and then you go back to like what she's saying. Then they have that kind of fear in the back of their mind too. I understand everything you're saying. I understand it. I've talked to Anjanette. I've talked to Beth. I understand it. But we what? Want to use that money. Right. right. So here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. With any funder, you have to provide by their rules That's right. and their guidelines of what they tell you. If you are um, afraid. <laughs> to use the funds and go by those guidelines and don't use it. All right, so let me say this. I'm looking at it from this big picture and I know we've all got, been a little gun shy with, with DHS funds because of the, the things, but they have a large pot of workforce money intended for workforce. And as long as your intent is not criminal and you're not trying to bilk anybody out of money or do anything illegal, then you really don't have anything to worry about. The intent is not there. So let's say we come back and somebody is, is oh, well, that student actually was a, made $100,000 last year. We didn't know. Okay, well, then that we can write that up or make, they're not going to check that, y'all. They're not going to get to that low level because they can't. There's no possible way they're going to look at every piece of student documentation for all of our students. Now, I'm not telling you not to do all the documentation at all. That is yeah, not yeah, my yeah. point. Yeah. But we have to have, we have to have, we have to have good faith. Yeah. We have to have good faith 
that DHS is being a good partner with us because they need those funds to be used and we have the student population and the training. Period. So can I say one more thing? Sure. Um, the other thing about this is hold up, not talking. Two points, and then I'll be done. Um, you know how one person can ruin everything for everybody. That's right. I think this is a situation where that happened. Mm -hmm. When that whole scandal thing went out and the misuse of funds, we had a grant during that period. We had three. We managed three grants in that period. We're still under a forensic audit, mm -hmm. okay? We provided all of our documentation from the monies, the pennies that we've spent, from the way our programs were managed. And we are okay. Yes. Okay? Yes. That's because we manage our programs, we come out and we monitor y'all, we ask you questions, we ask you to, you know, provide certain documentation. You know, that's because we want to make sure that we are okay that's at right. the end of the day. Because we don't want to owe anything back. And one of the things y'all presidents have said that we want to make sure that we don't have to pay any money back. Right. That's their biggest concern. We don't want y'all to give us money and then two or three years later we have to pay it back. We don't want to do that. And so it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, a couple of people ruined it for everybody. It could be the same thing with federal funds, mm -hmm. y'all. It's the same with any funder. The only reason we're scared is because there was a scandal. DHS needs us as much as we need them. Mm -hmm. Our grant will be extended mm -hmm. next year. We, we already got something from, the, from DHS, and they want to be good partners with us. And as long as we're good partners and we're doing the right things, then we are going to have those issues. And we're, it, part of that is just getting used to, okay, this is how the process works, and, and moving through and, and not letting fear drive you. I doubt it. Um, I doubt it, but what maybe what we can do is just ask for a meeting with them to go yeah. over, you know, just yeah. go over. I mean, I'm just thinking because that student, they may be taking a one-hour online workshop right. class for $10. Right. And we're going to go through all this for $10? Yeah. We can have that conversation. All right. We'll have that conversation. Good. All right. She got a wrap-up. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You ready? You want to say something before no. I wrap-up? Because my wrap-up is real short now. <laughs> All right. Anybody, well, we didn't hear from everybody. Is there any other? Yeah, see, they had, they heard some of the same. That's what I thought. That's why we reported out. She got another one. <laughs> see, see. Team teaching. Team teaching. Okay. Because, like I said, oh, I'm actually, I want to get all my friends approved. Like, go through some questions. Well, then the problem is, you send them here, there, and everywhere. You don't have a team teacher. You go to all those. So, what's the solution to that? It's a violation. So this is the deal. When you've got students all over, you got that single set of learning objectives, your team teaching doesn't mean that they have to be in the same room teaching all the time. It means that the teacher and the CTE person and the workforce person have sat down and identified in those single set of learning objectives and you're teaching the basic skills to support that class. Now, let's just be honest. Across our CTE programs, most of them need measurement, math, basic skills. You're not going to have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to document in your SSLOs, that sounds weird, um, that you're following the basic skills for that program and you're supporting them and that is co communication. Okay. Now, of course, we would love to have full-time teachers in the teaching and doing all that. We don't have the funds to do that. Until we get state funds um, to support this, which is our eventual goal, this is what we got to do. We got to make it work. We have to build it to expand it. We got good bones, yo. Though we got uh, that was the thing I meant to say this morning. We got a good foundation. We got a really good foundation. We just need to keep keep moving forward. Good. Anybody else? Any other comments? Northeast. Northeast. Um, they just say that they're um, going to continue to move forward with the way they have implemented IET and they have better understanding of the IET pathways for the foundation and they're just having to work better with their CTE and workforce to get more involved and take ownership and working together better. 
and then using their financial uh, aid department on board to use the buildings to benefit. So the solution is you for our way. Absolutely. Good. <laughs> Tell her. Thank you. So let me give you real quick vision. Next year, or within the year, CTE directors, workforce directors, and adult ed directors will be in the same room. I promise you that. We just have to get through the, the final pieces of COVID and get back to normal. We will all be in the room together and we will have these conversations, okay? We just haven't had that opportunity to do that. All right, I'm done. It's your wrap up. I'm done. You <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Look, thank y'all for having this discussion with us. Um, it really helps, and it really helps us frame our next conversation about IET. I think we better know now how to help you um, based off some of the feedback we've gotten today. Some of it is you have to build those partnerships at your college or on your own, though. Um, and if you need us to help you do that, then let us know. We're happy to do that. It's something about coming from the state board to your college <laughs> that gets folks in line. So if we, you know, if there's anything we can do to, to help support you all, please let us know. If you're afraid to reach out to me, you can reach out to Beth, you can reach out to Carla, um, Sandy, Bronwyn, and Jeanette, uh, Tiara, Courtney, you know, we have a, a, a whole bucket of folks you can reach out to, okay? So, um, the last thing I want to say is that we keep very um, detailed files at the State Board of all of our programs, okay? That's adult ed. That's all of the grants that we are running. And we would like for you all to do the same at your colleges if you are not already doing that. So that when the auditors or whoever's monitoring your program come out, you can say, here's all of my program stuff right here. And all they have to do is sit down and flip. They don't have to ask you where anything is. So we have, we have financial binders that Anjanette keeps that are very crisp and clean, as Mark said. Um, we have programmatic binders that has everything in there from our PD trainings to travel to uh, evaluations, everything. So if you've not started doing, it, doing that, make a habit of keeping a program binder for every single year. And that way, if we come back and say, we want to see what you did in 2018, you can say, well, here's my 2018 binder. Here are all of my sign-in sheets. Here's the staff that were on board. Here's our team teaching schedule. You have all of that laid out. And when 2018 is over, you can put it on the shelf. And we're moving on to 2019. So just make a habit of keeping everything in one place. I promise you, you won't regret it. OK? And so with that said, Sandy and I thank you for, um, for your time today. Carla, thank you for allowing us to run over.